This holiday season, lots of us are already wondering how and when we ate so much. And in just a few days, New Year's resolutions will send millions back to the gym. But will they all feel welcome there? For many overweight Americans, the answer is no. Tonight, we meet the man behind a special workout facility where it's just the size of your commitment that matters. Here's ABC's Alex Perez with a very personal story. In a culture that values thin, the controversy rages on. There we go, big smile. From plus-size models posing for the cameras to actresses like Lena Dunham proudly bearing it all in the new season of her hit show, Girls. I feel like I'm a person who just, like, can't keep my mouth shut. The curvaceous comedian Rebel Wilson tweets about her cupcake hangovers, while Melissa McCarthy graced the cover of Elle, though her fans complained she had to cover up too much. Plus size is going mainstream, with clothing stores that market cute clothes to big girls. I think in today's world, when there's so many positive you know, role models out there, Octavia Spencer, Adele, Melissa McCarthy from Bridesmaids, that I think are changing the way things are viewed. Vogue magazine, notorious for featuring paper-thin figures, recently featured the curvy Kate Upton on the cover. So is there still real shame in being overweight? For Chris, Sharon, Lewis, and David, the answer is yes. They are all here at Downsize Fitness. 15 seconds. A Chicago gym where membership is reserved for the overweight only. There's a need for a place that heavy people need to go and concentrate on losing weight. They are all self-described outcasts from the mainstream gym scene. There's not a, a culture of acceptance in America for overweight people. You can still uh, discriminate based on size. Downsize fitness is now part of the national argument. Are overweight people still treated differently? One hot button issue, overweight airline passengers. Should they have to buy an extra seat? Blogger Kenley Tiggeman says she was humiliated by a Southwest Airlines gate agent in 2011. The gate agent came up to me and he began, he asked me how much I weighed. He said that I was too fat to fly, that I would need an additional seat. Sharon has also felt the pain of harsh stares and ridicule. She joined Downsize Fitness last year, starting weight 376 and still reeling from the sting of a bad experience with a personal trainer at a mainstream gym. I don't know if she was afraid of, you know, training a fat person or what it was. So all I was able to do was sit in a corner and work on the treadmill. It made me feel like a pariah, like I didn't belong there, but yet I was allowed to join. In six months at Downsize Fitness, Sharon dropped 20 pounds. The workouts are stressful, they're tiring. We ask people to come five times a week. We call people if they uh, don't show up. They only allow membership to those at least 50 pounds overweight. You know, there's some who will argue that you're segregating the obese people. Why do they need to have their own gym? How do you respond to that? Gyms are built for fit people to stay fit. I don't think they're built for fat people to get fit. So in a way we're segregating, but we're segregating for a reason. Her goal weight, 225. <laughs> Lewis, more than a year ago, starting weight, 310 pounds. You got it. He tried to lose weight at one of those other gyms and was a member for 12 years, paying $75 a month. But after only one year, he never went back. So for 11 years, you paid for a gym membership and you never went? It wasn't something where I was comfortable going into the gym. Uh, you're on your own. There's no one there to help you. There's no one to explain what you should be doing. Lewis has dropped 50 pounds in just six months. His goal weight, 180. You're doing fish and you like do a lot of soy. Exercise physiologist Jennifer Ventrell says the program works. Is this a cop out in some ways? And where does it end? Do you start having grocery stores for big people? Do you start having bigger planes specifically for bigger people? This is about making someone feel comfortable to make the change, to engage in a healthy behavior. It's not, oh, it's okay that you're big. You can stay the way that you are. There you go. Chris is their biggest success story yet. His first day, he weighed nearly 550 pounds. Almost two years later, he's lost more than 250 pounds and hopes to get down to 190. Like I said, the fear got the best of me. Chris took me back to his neighborhood and we retraced the half block long walk that eventually brought him to downsize. I was like this. 
and I was just trying to hold myself up and my back was just hurting too much. Now, he's one of the most active members at the gym. His BMI has decreased by 35 points, and his body fat percentage is down 20%. And a month ago, he was part of a group that completed a climb up the Willis Tower, more than 2,100 steps in 36 minutes. Full disclosure, this is a battle I'm all too familiar with. When I was a teenager, I weighed 356 pounds, a size 54 waist. It took me years of dieting and exercising alone before I was able to bring down my weight and live healthier. You now having others who understand the frustration of being obese would have helped. So there's definite success here. People are losing a lot of weight here and it's a great place to do it. For Nightline, I'm Alex Perez in Chicago.